Okay, I don't have much battery left on this camera, so I better make this quick. I thought it was about time to take you through a talk through on the audio setup over at my computer while annoying Christmas trees blink outside. So, let's get started. So, firstly, we've got my Vestafire tape deck, which I'm using as a mixer. This is from about 1988 and still works great. So this is mixing the two outputs from my computer and also the output from this. And the output from this is going along these wires over to this contraption over here. Now what this is, this is kind of like control central. Got a volume control stereo mono switch a level meter to me um, monitor the levels and this micro switch here is connected to a timer which is this thing over here and that timer I can use to know whether it's time to get up or not if I press this switch and I do not hear the relay click I know it's still time to sleep but if I press the switch and I do hear the relay click... Excuse the state of the wall, I did try to clean it. I know it is time to get up. The audio from that comes back and goes into this tape deck here. Well, reel to reel. Now, this is from about 1973. And this is what I use as the amplifier for the two speakers. Now, just before the camera battery completely runs out, there is this device down here. Now, this is when I want that tube sound. It's connected to one of the computer's outputs. It's powered off this transformer here. These tubes are, I believe, 1940s new old stock. Or at least they were when I got them. I've got a switch to turn it on and off. And another switch to buy bypass the tubes if I wish to. And because tubes are such high in pins devices, there's another little circuit right here, which is the buffer for the output of the tubes. And that's basically it. That is the uh, talk through of the um, sound system. Okay, so I guess that's the first part of the video over. So I want to do a little bit of a rant about audio on TV shows these days. When I'm watching shows that I've either downloaded or um, just live. It's all right with the older shows, but these modern TV shows, the sound effects are like five or six times louder than the dialogue. It's ridiculous. I don't know why on modern TV shows and modern movies they have to have the sound effects bellowing out as loud as they can possibly get it. They didn't do that in the older shows. They kept the levels nice and consistent. So what I want to do is put a little circuit on the output of this which is currently connected rather AV out there to regulate the volume levels now this was my first idea to build an audio compressor now this is this circuit here but with a two-stage transistor amplifier added to it and I've used germanium diodes this time because that's what the original schematic called for but this didn't work too well. It worked. It did get the sound levels nice and consistent. But it's in, it didn't sound very good. It's pretty distorted. However, on the wall here, I've got a much better circuit. And I've used this many, many, many times before. And it's never failed me yet. So, this is what I'm going to go with. Instead of having the microphone there, I'm going to have a potentiometer so I can adjust how much audio level actually gets into the circuit. And to save time, I've already gone and built one. Now this is one I built a long time ago. I'm going to modify it because this has the microphone preamp on it. Which is this transistor here. Those other three transistors you can see, they're the ones that are actually in the schematic. That's that transistor, that transistor, and that transistor. So, I'm going to chop off the microphone preamp, leaving just... this part of the circuit and we'll see where we go from there
So that's that done, so we can discard of that. So, I've had a look at the circuit, and this capacitor here is where the audio is going in. So somewhere on here, I'm going to have to mount another potentiometer, so I can adjust how much actual sound gets in, if that makes sense. Okay, making some progress here. Got the potentiometer, left and right inputs, and here's what I've actually done. Now, I'm sure some of you have already noticed that I'm not going to get stereo out of this circuit, but I don't really care for that. I just want the levels to be nice and consistent. So, got the left and right inputs going through these 220 ohm resistors, that way they don't fight against each other. And this potentiometer, which is going to adjust the levels, and this 10k as well, which is also going to lower the levels down even more, because this circuit requires a very, very small level of inputs. Okay, so remember all this unused space at the bottom here? Well, here's the thing. I want to run this off the USB port, but because the USB port is 5 volts, and this circuit typically requires 9 volts, this little voltage converter will boost up the voltage. So 9 volts is almost twice 5 volts, so I'm going to need almost twice the current, but I really don't think that's going to be a problem. Well, let's see if this thing will run off 5 volts. So I've connected it to a crude USB there. Got the meter on the other end. And this thing can boost as well as um, reduce. So I'm just trying to plug this into the USB. It's very difficult holding the camera and holding this at the same time. Hopefully it won't go up in smoke. Okay. So we've taken our 5 volts and we've boosted it to 12.63. So this thing is working. So all I've got to do now is just this little trimmer here so we get 9 volts and we should be good to go. There we go. Adjusted this to 9 volts. Now hopefully the output of this isn't going to be too noisy for me to use in this. And I'm going to have to change my memory card because I've only got like 3 minutes left. Okay, so I've got a few more wires on that now. And this is the connector that I'm going to use to connect the thingy's output to um, this. You would expect that the white wire would be for the left audio, the red wire would be for the right audio, and the yellow wire would be for video. Well, that doesn't seem to be the case. Somehow, the yellow and the white are the left and, white, left and right audio. I don't know which one is which, but it doesn't really matter since I'm going to be using this in mono anyway. And the red wire is where the composite video is coming out. Which is strange. I don't know why it's that way, but, um... Well, here it is all done. Question is, does it work? Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. Oh, and if you're wondering about this... Yeah, I've left that out like that because... I have plans. Okay, well, we're all ready to test. Now, I've turned the potentiometer down as far as it goes, so when I turn this on, we shouldn't actually get any sound at first. Oh, yeah, I guess it would help if I actually plug this into the USB so it's got power. Right, okay. So, I'll turn my monitor over to HDMI 2. I'll turn this on. I'm going to turn the volume up, and hopefully we should have regulated sound. There we go. Nice and compressed. Oh, well, this isn't very loud, so I'm just going to turn this up. So what, so what, what would the most expensive... Cause some well, I can hear a little bit of compression right away, so, uh, so yeah, that appears to be working. Alright, so we're going to see how well this thing works. So, 
I've got the computer ready to record the sound, which I might just as well do right now. Now, I'm going to have to point the camera at the screen because I've got no way of capturing HD video other than pointing the camera at the screen. So, start with Dusty recording. Go over to HDMI 2. I've already got right, something queued up, ready to play. So, I'm going to hear it through the compressor and then direct. Found a particularly loud scene from Red Dwarf, so uh, yeah, let's do that. Oh, the looks I used to get! Wait, slow down! You're criticizing faster than the extractor can cope! I've hardly started! Oh, you, your inner critic's too powerful! The, the extractor can't process it! But why can't it process it? Cheap damn Minerva negative energy inner critic bottling machines! But you start criticizing! <laughs> Okay, now let's try it without the compressor. Oh, the looks I used to get! Wait, slow down! You're criticizing faster than the extractor can cope! I've hardly started! Oh, your inner critic's too powerful! The, the extractor can't process it! But why can't it process it? Cheap damn Minerva negative energy inner critic bottling machines! Well, you start criticizing! <laughs> Well, the results are in, and it looks like my circuit's working pretty well. So, this along here was recorded without my compressor circuit, whereas this along here was recorded with the compressor circuit. You can see right about here there's a quite a loud bit, but on the part that was recorded through the compressor, that loud bit is pretty much at the same level as everything else. And that's what I want. Okay, so I think I'll just end with a few schematics. Now this is like take 50 of this, so I hope I don't forget anything this time. Now, I know this looks rather intimidating, but I'll go through this each piece by piece, because this is the entire schematic of everything that's over there. So... We've got the compressor here for the Sky Q box. So this is the Sky Q box itself. Got a couple of resistors here to mix that into mono. Then these two resistors attenuate that signal, and this variable resistor controls just how much attenuation you need. And that goes into this transistor here, which we'll come to in just a moment. This transistor amplifies the signal. Let me get our output there. And this transistor with these diodes and capacitors form a peak hold circuit, which then gets fed into the base of this first transistor I mentioned, which can clamp the signal down. So, when there's a loud signal coming along, this transistor puts out quite a strong voltage, which makes this transistor clamp down the, vol um, the input signal even more, but when there's a weak signal here, there's only a small voltage coming out of there, so this transistor doesn't clamp the voltage down as much. So that's that. Now, the VU meter circuits. So I've got a voltage divider here, providing effectively a positive and negative 6 volts for the op amp. Here's where our signal comes in, and we've got a couple of diodes to rectify the output of the op-amp, and then that is going into the meter. That's pretty simple. So, the tube circuit. Again, it's very simple. I've drawn both channels. So we've got our left and right inputs going into these tubes here. And the output of these tubes comes from the cathode, and we've got a switch here to switch the tubes in or out of the circuit. And because these tubes are quite high impedance devices, I made another circuit here. Just to buffer the output from the tubes. Just made with a couple of op amps. Inverting input kind of op amps. I mean, an inverting amplifier, that's what I meant to say. It does have a tiny little bit of gain because I just wanted it to have a little bit of gain. I mean, it's not much, it's about maybe one and a half times. 
and I've configured these op amps again to operate off a single rail supply. Very different to how I did it with the VU meter. And that's basically the circuits, the whole thing. And here's how the, all those are wired up. If you want to take a glance at that, I'm not going to explain anything, but yeah. So, I think that's about it for now, so until next time, goodbye. Typical, isn't it? It's cloudy, so what do we get? Sun. This must be... This must be the greyest, brightest day ever. Even when it's pissing down, the sun's out. It's ridiculous. I mean, does the sun just literally go below the clouds? Even though it's impossible since it's 93 million miles away, but still. You want to see one of the most ridiculous things known to all mankind? Windows 10. It's still ridiculous. I mean, look at this thing that just came up on my computer screen, for no apparent reason whatsoever. You need a new app to open this MS Gaming overlay. I have no idea what put this up, but I cannot close it. Because the OK button? Uh, it's greyed out. Even if I click it... See? It does nothing. And there's no way to close this. Do you see close button anywhere? There's usually a close button up there. But no. There is no close button. So usually when these things come up, I just press the reset button on my computer. It's the only way I can get rid of them. But I cannot do it right now because it's downloading something. So I'm just going to have to sit here with this on the screen.